Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today's video is about the SIG P250. The one that does not go off when you drop it. Normally when I do a video like this, I will open the box up to show what's in there and then kind of just uh, go from there. Unfortunately this time I have just simply lost the box over time. It came in a very cheap um, cardboard box and it kind of just got destroyed and I don't know where the manual is either. So, SIG P250. What is this? This is a, a pretty competent, competently well made um, semi automatic double action only, you know, service type pistol. It's no longer production now, it's been superseded by the 320. But when it was available, when it was being made, I think between like 2007 and 2017, about, about theirs. Uh, it was offered in a variety of calibers like 357 SIG. This is the 357 SIG um, version. It was offered also offered in 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, 22 long rifle, although that one didn't work very well, uh, and 380. So a variety of calibers and a variety of sizes and configurations. You get in subcompact, compact, full size. Um, you know, this is you have removable grips. This is actually the I don't know what that uh, compact medium. Okay, so it's the compact grip with the medium size. Uh, so there's a lot of variations of this gun you could have gotten. So where do we go from there? How do we uh, how do we approach this? Well, let's just go through this particular example of gun, and we'll go from there. So first of all, I love this FDE color. Uh, I wish I had this one in large. I think uh, my my hand size prefer prefers the large one. This is a black one that's enlarged. We'll get to the, these later, but this is the, the black one that's enlarged, and this is just a removable frame. The SIG P250 was one of the first, if not the first, gun that had a kind of unitized serialized fire control unit that was removable from the rest of the gun. So the slide can come off, the frame can come off, and you're left with the serialized part, and we'll get there. Let's talk about the gun itself. First, magazines. So this is the 357 SIG version, and this is... These are 10-round magazines for the compact. So this will work for either the 40 Smith & Wesson or the 357 SIG version. Uh, standard capacity for the compact was 12 rounds. This is, unfortunately, 10 rounds for New Jersey. These are identical and interchangeable with the 320. So yeah, this one says six hour. This is kind of the older style of base plate. Let me see what I got here. And this is the newer style. So that's literally the only difference between the 250 and the 320 magazines. Just the redesign the the base pads a little bit. That's it. Otherwise they're interchangeable. Magazines are steel, good quality, a little expensive, but they work pretty well. What are the grip? This is the kind of Gen 2 grip or frame. The original frames uh, were flat, they didn't have this kind of recess cut here, uh, and they look kind of 1950s sci-fi. I prefer this redesign. So the grip itself is pretty good, pretty excellent. The ergonomics are very good, this fits my hand well. Sometimes I prefer the, the large one, but I tend to go back and forth between the large and the medium. But ergonomics are good, good undercut, you get a little bit over there. Um, good texturing all around. Now this is a very well designed grip. Now this is not strictly speaking interchangeable with the current version of the 320. They redesigned the frame just a little bit. I think the slide release is different now. So it's, there have been some minor changes over the years since the 320 came out. When the 320 first came out, the frames were identical, but now they're just a little bit different. Good magazine release that is reversible. I think you stick a paper clip in here or something like that and the magazine release will come apart you can switch to the other side or to different frames a nice good trigger guard I uh, notice there is no manual safety on the gun nothing over here nothing over here but no trigger safety doesn't need it got the slide release here slide release here this particular version comes with uh, night sights which are pretty good unfortunately one of the I think major criticisms of the P250 was the fact it uses its own propri proprietary rear sight. Um, 
I'm not sure what the rationale behind that was, but it is proprietary to this particular model of gun. They could have just used SIG P229 sights or 226 sights. They did not. They went this weird thing, which does work, but you have very little options for changing out these sights. Fortunately, they are pretty decent. Some will come with contrast sights and night sights. The hammer is recessed. We'll get to that. You can't cock it or anything like that. It's just recessed back there. Trigger, trigger guard, uh, takedown lever. Otherwise, not a whole lot of controls. This is a this is a uh, like a notch or a rail for a Blackhawk Omnivore holster, which is like a universal type of holster that Blackhawk makes. I didn't feel like taking this off. I think it's four four slots here. Pretty good slicerations. None in the front. That wasn't really styled at the time. Notice how the gun itself is is kind of Sig like. Looks kind of like a Sig P26. Not quite. It's got those kind of squared off contours and edges to it, or you know, squared off edges to it, it makes it look very sig-like. I believe this is a three point, like a 3.9 or a four inch barrel, around there. And like I mentioned before, you can have this in a variety of different sizes and calibers, subcompact, compact, full size, and 9mm, 40, all those different flavors. And yeah, so, I found this gun to be very uh, reliable, very durable, Accuracy is okay. I, 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 in fact, the accuracy, uh, I thought the accuracy was better than what I have in printed targets, but I'll get there. You know, why don't, why didn't people like the SIG P250? And honestly, it was the trigger. The SIG P250 has this long, um, it's not heavy, but it's kind of long and it's, it's smooth, it's relatively light, but it is wrong, but it is long. So it's basically like a really nice double action revolver. And you'll pull the trigger, you know, assuming that the, you know, you put a magazine in and it's loaded, rack the, rack the slide. You pull the trigger, the gun will go off. Slide will reciprocate. Now, it doesn't act, it doesn't enter a, a single action mode like many double single action guns like a Beretta or a SIG P26. It is double action only. So you can only, this is it. This is all it does. So it provides a, a relatively long, but like I said, light and smooth double action pull. And a lot of people just didn't like it. Just didn't like it. So Sig had this for a number of years and said, ah, you know, people aren't really liking this, you know. There was a time when Sig would sell like kits. When this gun first came out, they would sell kits. Like, oh, it's the two-sum package. So we'll give you a 9mm full size for home defense and a 9mm subcompact for concealed carry. And you'll switch around the parts on your guns every single day to reconfigure to a different size. And it's gonna be like the one gun to rule them all. And admittedly, you know, size conversions and caliber conversions are a little hokey, a little oversold. Although I, I have taken advantage of a number of these things. This is a... I don't know why it says SIG on it. But this is a 40 Smith & West, Wesson conversion barrel, so I can just pop this in. I think it, it looks like it's the full-size barrel, so it'll it'll stick out of the, of the gun a little bit. But it looks like the full-size barrel, but it does work in here. It does work. I have used it. So I can pop this 40 Smith & Wesson barrel in this 357 SIG gun, and then I have 357 SIG. Also, I just very recently purchased this. In fact, I think I got this yesterday. This is a little beat up, but this is a 9mm example. So I can show you a little bit of this gun from this one. Sometimes, depending on the size and caliber, you'll get a captive recoil spring. Sometimes not. This one does not have a captive recoil spring. But you know, there's nothing really groundbreaking going on here. This one does not have night sights, these are just you know, contrast painted sights. So let's say I wanted to go from this uh, compact with a medium size grip in 3.7 SIG to this gun with the large grip and 9mm. So what do we do? So first we lock the slide back. You do it by backing the slide and pushing up on the slide release. Push down on the takedown lever. Take the slide off. We'll see some of the internals. Like I said, this is not a captive recoil spring. It's braided too, that's interesting. Depending on your size and caliber, you get different things. Notice how the 9mm one has weight reduction cuts in it. This one doesn't. 
trying to mix all the parts together. So we're still, we're still going to swap. So we got to get this this piece out, this fire control unit out. So we're going to do. We're going to. There was something I wanted to use. Ah. I want to use this. I didn't want to. I want. I didn't want to scratch it. So I'm going to use this end. What you're going to do is you're going to have this all the way down. And you're going to push. I just like to use this because I think it doesn't scratch it as much. So this is the takedown lever. I'm pulled out. Now we're going to take this whole thing out. What I do is I push up. A little tight in there. The whole thing pivots up from here, but it's stuck on this trigger. So I'm going to pull back on the hammer and the trigger at the same time. And I'm going to, it's not going. Sigma's like, yeah, people are going to want to do this every single day. It doesn't want to come out. There we go. A little hard to do on camera while I'm simultaneously looking through the viewfinder and And trying to do it. So again, this pivots in here. It goes in like that. Push that. Make sure it's seated properly. See, doing good. Okay. Push that. Put that back in the way I had it out. So far, so good. Get the nine millimeter slide. Very warm. This one has been used, absolutely been used in a lot. I haven't tested this one out yet, so it'd be nice to shoot 9mm. It'd be a easier to shoot this gun, cheaper, cheaper to shoot. And even like this recoil spring in this particular example looks a little dirty and beat up. This, whoever had this before me definitely used it, that's for sure. And we're going to put it back on. Doesn't quite want to go. I think this is out of place, out of alignment. I don't know the special orientation for that, but let's see. Okay. I think I got it now. Yeah, who wouldn't want to do this every day? I kind of li I like how the large one feels in my hand. To be honest. Although I love this FDE frame. I love the color. I gotta get. I gotta get a large one in FDE. Now, so I got the 9mm slide, and I've been told, I haven't tested it out myself, that you can use 9mm ammunition in these 40 caliber magazines. I'm going to test that out. That would be a really nice bonus if I don't have to go out and buy the magazines. And yeah, now we just switched, we switched the size, we switched the, we switched the size of the frame. We switch caliber. So I, I I was always kind of endeared to the SIG P250. I thought it was a cool idea. This one's been used, but not quite as much as the other one. And when SIG introduced the 320, I, I thought that the gun had lost everything that kind of made it special. You know, it was just another striker fired handgun, polymer frame striker fired handgun, like every other one. Although, lo and behold, SIG came out with the 320, everyone loved it. And to be fair, very recently I went to the store and I had I saw a 320 in the, in the case. It's a very basic model for $500. And the 320 has a phenomenal trigger. I'll give them that. Phenomenal trigger. Unfortunately, when SIG came out with the 320, they didn't give it a trigger safety and they found out if you like drop it on the back, the weight of the trigger will be enough to make it go off. So they had to redesign the gun for that. P250 didn't have their problem. Same. Before I forget, I do have some targets. And admittedly, these aren't so great. They're not. Because I hadn't shot the gun in a while. And I was using 357 SIG, which is, you know, a snappier cartridge. Not too much. This is, by the way, this is 357 SIG. See how it has a little bit of a bottleneck there? I think that's cool. For whatever reason, this is like it's kind of some, some kind of stainless or nickel casing. I guess stainless casing. Uh, but I always thought the 376 cartridge was cool. Basically, it's 40. It's like a you know 10 millimeter casing, neck down to 9 millimeter, and going super fast to replicate 357 Magnum performance. It doesn't quite do with the hottest loads, but like the standard 
357 Magnum load, it'll, it'll replicate, and that, so it's pretty cool. It does actually do what it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, uh, it kind of got you know thrown out along with 40 Smith and Wesson. But you know, I, now I have access to nine millimeter, 40 Smith and Wesson, and 376. So this is seven yards. It looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five shots, seven yards. Yeah, it's okay. This is ten yards, and while you know, every shot is on the target, um, spreading out a lot. Fifteen yards. I'm actually missing a lot of fifteen yards, it looks like. It looks like what do we got? I got one, two, three, four, maybe one over here. I'm actually missing a lot of fifteen yards. Twenty yards. Wait, one, two, three. It's not very good. 25 yards. One, two, three, four. It's basically only three on target. So admittedly, I really didn't get the greatest groups with this gun. So how can I say it's a good gun? Well, you know, you gotta practice with it. This is a gun that takes a little bit more practice and a little bit more consistency and training to be good at. It'll do the job, but you gotta practice with it. You know, I wasn't super accustomed to that. 376 cartridge. It has a little bit more snap than 9mm, not a ton, a little bit more. And you gotta do a consistent pull through. You can kind of, you do, you can do two ways. You can kind of go all the way through, or you can kind of stage it a little bit where you go like this, and then kind of slow down, and then you go there. And admittedly, I wasn't quite accustomed to the trigger again. I had to get reaccustomed to it. So you gotta practice with this gun. Now, what can I recommend this gun for? You know, I, I admitted that the trigger take take a little bit of getting used to. You got to kind of train with it a little more if you want to be real accurate with it. I still think this is a really excellent defensive pistol, something like a home defense gun or concealed carry gun, where you know you need shots. They can't be completely off target, but you just got to be good enough. You know, just good enough. Again, even have me ha having not practiced for a while. Seven to ten yards, I can hit a target. Even you know, even out of practice. And I think for home defense and concealed carry, that's a really, um, you know, really realistic choice. And because you have this long, heavy double action pull, you're not going to accidentally fire this gun. You know, you might be under stress. You might be suddenly in a firefight where you're not expecting it, and you don't want to be just suddenly jerking the trigger off. You have to deliberately pull this. You can't just have your finger on like, oh no, it went off. First of all, you figure it should be off the trigger unless you're ready to shoot. But when you're under stress, you might have your finger on this trigger, and that long double action pull is going to stop you from accidentally shooting it. So if you see this at a, at a gun store, and you see it on the shelf for like two or three hundred dollars or whatever it is, it's kind of sitting there. No one's really buying it. I said go pick it up. Especially if you get it in a nice caliber, if you get it in 9mm or maybe just like 40 caliber or 45, whatever it is. I guess 9's the choice of the day. But if you can get a different caliber and you get a good price, yeah, pick it up. Pick it up. Keep in mind that this will take 320 magazines. Just You, you don't have to specifically look for P250 magazines. 320 magazines will fit in here. This is a 320 magazine. This, you know, it goes right in. It works. The grips were the same, not quite anymore. The magazines are the same. I think the barrels are the same. For whatever reason, you need a barrel. Slides are not because you know this is an entirely different mechanism. This is hammer fired, 320s, striker fired. But yeah, definitely recommended. Um, you need to practice with it. You'd be good with it. There are a lot. There are other guns that you can kind of just pick up and shoot and not have to maybe trained to such an extent, but I think the P250 is still a cool gun, and it's unfortunate. It's kind of, it's kind of been forgotten and overclipsed by the 320. So anyway, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel. I don't know if I've been ranting too much, but I, I hope you enjoy the rant. I like the P250, even though some people have kind of forgotten about it. And I will see you next time. Thank you, and goodbye.